Okay, bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, wa rahmatika wa rahman rahimin. So inshallah today uh, we are starting by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a surah to tawbah. And that was something uh, the people wanted to uh, hear about. So our last uh, surah, if I was to quickly ask you, and inshallah it's only a month away. So what was the last surah that we spoke about? MashaAllah, don't let me down guys, it, it was easy. Surah Sajda, that's right. So our last surah that we spoke about was Surah Sajda. And uh, we gave you some gems and some jewels of the surah, how, it's, how Allah always connects the surah. So inshallah today, uh, today's surah, uh, just before I go into the surah, it's also the most controversial surah used by the extremist as well for their advantage and also used by the Islamophobes for their advantage as well. So the Islamophobes actually also use this surah and they, they always use, they love this, uh, the verse number six, wherever you find them, you kill them. So this is the worst they love and they always uh, quote that. And also the extreme is they love this worst as well. And they also say wherever you find them, you kill them. So, and also this surah, there's many, many gems inshallah that we will be extracting inshallah. Now first we start with the most important thing. Why is this surah does not begin with basmala? Okay, basmala uh, for the subcontinent people means bismillah. So, uh, why it doesn't start uh, with Basmala? And uh, so basically, th there is a, many opinions. But inshallah, I'm only going to go on three tangents and I'll give you only three opinions. First, we'll go with the most authentic opinion, which is from Abdullah ibn Abbas. Radiallahu an. When Usman radiallahu an gave the responsibility to Zayd ibn uh, Thabit to actually compile the Quran together. They used to come back to Usman and Usman would tell them where to start the new surah. And Zayd ibn Thabit as well actually knew where to start the new surah as well. So he was uh, quite well informed about that as well. But at the same time, they wanted the Khalifa to endorse it and how the Quran has to be compiled. So Usman radiallahu an would say, and understand this surah came right at the end right at the end. So if you know the seerah really well, Tabuk is just a, the, a year before the Ghazwa, uh, sorry, Fatha Makkah and the Hajj, the Hajjatul Vida of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And within two years, actually less than two years, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will pass away. He will leave the world. So this surah is right at the end. Now I'll give you another gem, not about this surah, I'll give you a gem about the fight in the community. You know, uh, the Arab community believes that uh, when it comes to slaughtering, you don't have to say Basmillah. But the Pakistani community believes that you have to say Bismillah or Basmillah. Now, Quran, if you know Quran well, and that's why we're doing these things, why do you think one says you have to do it and the other one says you don't have to do it? So where are the rules of slaughtered mentioned? What are the surahs? Let's test you guys today. That's a trivia now. What are the two surahs mainly which speaks about the slaughters, uh, the laws of slaughter and the animals that you can eat? Not Anfal. Close. Not Baqarah as well. An arm. That's a giveaway. Do you know there's the ayahs of an arm actually speaks about Bismillah and Tasmiyah. Actually the word is Tasmiyah when you're slaughtering the animal. But why do you think the other group says you don't need it? What's the other surah where it's mentioned? And I'll give you another clue for that. That surah is also right at the end. And that surah actually speaks about that you can marry the people of the book as well. And in the same ayah, it says you can eat the meat of the people of the book as well. But it does not mention that you have to say Bismillah. That's a big giveaway for you guys. What surah is that? Ma'idah. So in the same ayah, 
So they say if Allah wanted to reiterate uh, Basmala, he would have said it in the last surah as well. Why he didn't say it? This is the last surah. This is the end of the surahs. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenukum. Allah actually mentions this ayah in Surah Ma'ida. Why he didn't say that? You, he's clearly saying you can actually eat the meat of Ahl al-Kitab. Does not say any of the other rulings or what or this or that. All these other rulings are Surah An'am, which is a more earlier Surah. It's an earlier Surah. If you know Asbab al-Nuzul, when it came down, it came down right bang in the middle of the Madani time. So that's why if you know Quran, how it was revealed, then you can reconcile, you can know these rulings. That's why it's important that you have to take the narrative away from all kinds of extremists. So, so Usman radiallahu an, when, uh, when Zayd ibn Sabit and Abdullah ibn Abbas actually is asking, that's the hadith, so he's asking, he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not tell us to add Bismillah. Okay, now you also need to know this as well, that every ayah of the Qur'an, when it came down and writing uh, the names of the surah, these were not done by the Sahaba. So the actual manuscript of Qur'an did not have any ayah numbers and also did not have the name of the surahs. Rasulullah did not say that. He arranged the Qur'an the way it's read today. This was done by the Tabi'een later on. It was only done by, for us people that will come to Islam and it was, uh, it was actually fought through. Why? Because we will get confused how to read Qur'an. You know, um, I have this Persian Qur'an in front of me. It even tells you where to take the breath as well. So if you do have the Usmani Khat, it actually does not tell you any of those things. You just read the Qur'an the way it is and also does not give you the rules of Idgham as well. But these, this Qur'an over here, this one that the, we, us Pakistanis, we love, and we should love it. Why? Because it, it makes our life easy. And uh, so this one actually tells you everything. Where to stop, how to stop, and everything. It tells you everything. And I'm sure you all have it. I like it. Why? Because uh, this is a really good translation. I could not find it in Usmani Khat. So I actually like the translation. That's why I kept it. So... And, and uh, moving on, inshallah. So this is what happened at that time. So basically, uh, Usman said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not tell us, and I can't remember if he told us to separate it or not. And also, they both are surahs about war. So if you know the last ayahs uh, of, uh, of Surah An'am, it's actually talking about, uh, sorry, Surah Anfal. It's talking about the betrayal of the disbeliever. The last, the bang, the last ayah is saying the betrayals of the disbeliever. If they betrayed the Allah, if they betray you, they betrayed me as well. So I will leave them on their own tools. And if you start Surah uh, Tawbah, it actually starts by completely, Allah says, bara. Allah says we're bari. Now you are now free from them shirk. Allah gives the disbelievers the time of four months. Four months to pack your bags, to either believe in Islam or pack your bags and leave Mecca. So you can't stay over here. That's how the surah starts. It starts really uh, with a firm warning. And that's how, uh, and the, so Usman actually believed it's a different surah, but Rasulullah did not tell us to add basmala. So that's why, and this is the more correct opinion. Now I'm going to give you opinions of other scholars as well. And uh, first let's speak about this uh, opinion of Ali radiallahu an. Ali radiallahu an uh, says, I'm going to give you the opinion of Imam Malik, which is my best opinion. I really love it. Why? Because Imam Malik, mashallah, is one of the smart imams in our time. And he was also more close to Sunnah. Why? Because he was raised and he was an imam of Medina. So he was an imam of Sunnah. So he grew up in Medina and he preached in Medina. And so whenever the things that the, Imam, the Maliki fiqh, when they have something, it's more closer to the culture of the Arabs. Because every Arab lived in Medina. Every uh, Sahabi lived in Medina. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa lived in Medina. So it's like, you know, you say, or we always uh, claim, I believe Shalwar Kameez is more closer to the Sunnah. I actually believe that. Why is that? Because the Sahabas were fighting the war. You tell me, how would they sit on a horse if they were wearing a thobe? 
So I believe that uh, us Pakistanis did well when it came to the clothing. And even the Afghans and the Indians, we all wear that. I believe because they were fighting wars. Can you imagine lifting this up all the time sitting on the horse? It would not be easy. So if you had, uh, so you need to also understand what was the Sahabas, what they were wearing as well. Because they were riding horses. They didn't have cars. So I actually, this is my own uh, uh, understanding that yes, the clothing that we wear is more closer to the Sunnah. It's actually more closer. That's what the Prophet actually wore. And uh, so, so um, Ali radiallahu an said, this is Ali's opinion. This is not uh, uh, any other Sahabi's opinion. So he says, and this is also, uh, he says that how can Allah start with Bismillah rahman rahim when he's speaking about destroying uh, the disbelievers? How is Allah going to speak about his rahmah when he's actually uh, talking about that he's going to cut ties and he's speaking about that Allah has freed them, uh, you and himself from all the disbelievers. And also Imam Malik is more closer to this. And Imam Malik has a story. So Imam Malik says, uh, Ibn uh, Juzai, the Imam of the time, he says the Arabs knew the language really well. In Surah Ma'idah, there's an ayah of uh, cutting of the hands. So the ayah goes, uh, it says, um, So uh, the ayah goes in that way that uh, the one who's uh, the, the male, uh, one who steals and the female, the one who steals and their jaza is that you cut their hand off. Now subhanAllah, when they were reading the ayah, and he finished the ayah uh, that in Allah ghafoorur rahim. He actually finished the ayah with that. So the Bedouin said, how can this be possible? You're speaking about punishment and you're ending the ayah with ghafoorur rahim. You've made a mistake. The, the man who's reading the Quran, he says, no way, no, I didn't make a mistake. Then he reads the ayah again and then he says, no, no, there is a mistake in it. And then he says, in Allah azizun hakim. So then the Arab says, yes, now it makes sense. Aziz, the mighty one and the wise one. So he can punish whoever he likes because he's got the wisdom. He has the might to punish. So understand even the Arabs knew the language so well. If they even read the ayahs, they knew which name of Allah fits that. So even when the surah is starting, so Imam Malik said the surah is starting with a warning. How can Allah, same as what Ali radiallahu an said, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show, show rahmah in it? Now also Imam Malik had another opinion. Imam Malik said, because these surahs are very similar, and also you need to understand some of the surahs are not revealed straight away. Some ayahs come down in the first uh, period of uh, the Makki period, and then some ayahs come down late in Medina, so they come in that way. So that's how the surahs are made up. So Imam Malik said, and Fal and Malik, they're all one. And this was also the opinion of uh, Qatada radiallahu an. Qatada radiallahu an actually says that um, uh, the Surah uh, 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 Anfal and Surah Tawbah are actually the same Surah. So in Quran, there's 113 Surahs. How many Surahs? 113 Surahs. So they made Anfal and Tawbah in one. Now understand, this is only a scattered opinion. This is the opinion of Imam Malik and Qatada only, no one else. So also Imam Malik, for Imam Malik, there's only one Basmala in the Quran. Why? You need to understand all these basmalas are added later on. None of them actually was added by Rasulullah. They were all added later on. So Imam Malik said, for Imam Malik to read basmala in any surah is mandub. You don't have to read it. It's not even a sunnah for him. So for example, if the Maliki, and the Malikis are found in Mauritania. So if you know Quran, if you've learned warsh, in the warsh, which is Nafe's reading, so there's many readings of Quran, the Warsh reading. The Warsh reading does not have Basmallah before any Surah, except for Surah Fatiha. Why? Because the Hadith says Basmallah is part of Surah Fatiha. So that was the only Surah he added Basmallah. That's the only Surah. Apart from that, Imam Malik, the Warsh reading, the Imams who come from the north of Africa, the generally the Libyans, they know how to read Warsh. Uh, the Mauritanian, which, are, which is not really north, but it's the west of Africa. And then you've got, um, um, there's another one, Morocco. 
Algeria, these guys, they read Warsh. So they know how to actually uh, read Warsh and that's the reading of Nafi. And Nafi's reading is the reading of Medina. This is how the Sahabas read. This is how Imam Malik also read. That's a reading of Medina. That's a Nafi's reading. Okay, now moving on, inshallah. These are some of the things that you could um, extract from there. Also understand the other thing. Uh, this is uh, one of the benefits that I could find. And this is not a hadith. It is an athar. Athar of Umar ibn al-Khattab. What did he say? Ta'allam as-suratu al-bara'a min al-rijal. He said, teach your men surah bara'a. Meaning surah tawbah, teach that to your men. Why? And subhanAllah, this is my topic which I want to speak about in two weeks. Now subhanAllah, we are listening to so many things. And being a marriage counsellor myself, I sit with so many couples. Uh, we, we feel like uh, uh, the women uh, are, are doing so much work that they're losing their femininity. So they are not, uh, because they think they have to do this and do this. Because the men that we're ra raising nowadays are like most of these men do not know their responsibilities and they don't act very masculine and also then you've got these youtubers these uh, influencers they uh, make uh, the men like simp i don't know if you know what simp means but if you don't know i'll keep it for you to go and read it inshallah so a uh, simp is someone who's not so basically someone uh, who He's like a, a coward. He's, he's not really. I'm not, I don't take me wrong. I'm not saying men have to go and be like that or, or start hitting their wives or their children. That's not uh, masculinity. Masculinity means a man who takes responsibility of everything. He is not putting pressure on his wife to do the things that a man should be doing. And that's why, you know, our women are complaining because they are doing so many things. And we've got men today, men, they are playing games, video games for hours and end. And they've got nothing to do in their life. They're doing kills on Fortnite, playing PlayStation. If you're a 25 year old, you're on a PlayStation. I tell you what, you don't have to get married because you're not married where you're not marriage material. You're not a, you've not, you haven't reached the age of marriage yet until you know what responsibilities are. So that's why, inshallah, it's very important. So that's why uh, Umar ibn Khattab is saying, teach your men about Surah Tawbah. Why? Because it will tell you uh, the art of war, to fight and to be what masculine people are. And also he says, وَعَلَّمَهُ النِّسَاءُ سُورَةِ النُّورِ So you teach your women about Surah Nur. Tell them to learn this Surah. Why? Because that will, te will tell them about being how to be a feminine. It's very important. So, uh, and, and inshallah, we, uh, this is my topic for the last Friday, inshallah, which is coming in the same month. And uh, in, in uh, I don't know at the moment, uh, actually the September Friday, I'm not going to be here. Because inshallah, I'm going to Umrah. And that's my uh, journey, inshallah, every year. So f from the school, I'm taking the year 10s. And so I'm really excited. And why I'm excited? Because one of my favorite ayahs is in the Quran in Surah Tawbah. And I will, inshallah, I will tell you why I'm excited when I come to that ayah. So that's why, and that should be everyone's favorite ayah that sits over here. You all should make that ayah your favorite ayah. Now let's go. Um, before I go into that, as you know, I'm a very political person. I like politics. If I was not an imam, I'd be the prime minister of Australia. Uh, but um, Allah wanted another destination for me. So I'm an Imam, so I want to call out because I, alhamdulillah, I live in, and I, I value freedom of speech. And I value it in a way that we should all value. I'm worried about what's happening in UK. Recently, Robert Jenricks, he said a statement, and I was angry. And then, inshallah, I'll be making a short for Robert Jenrick, and I'll tag him in so he can re listen to what he said. This is what he said on the news, if you don't know. I'll read it. He says, uh, there is two-tier policing in UK and I am very critical when Muslims are chanting Allahu Akbar and they should be arrested straight away. I was moved. And subhanAllah, I wrote a, 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 you know, a, a, a kind of uh, answer to Jenrick. And this is my statement to Jenrick. And this is for everyone sitting over here that they can also, inshallah, benefit. 
Now let me tell you, everyone sitting over here, when the Muslim says, Allahu Akbar, he says it from his heart, and he says, God is great, Allah is great. And also, this is the central part of the Muslim belief. The Muslims actually believe that the central part of their belief is when we say Allah is great. And subhanAllah, Allahu Akbar is not just a phrase. Allahu Akbar is when we are happy, we say it. Allahu Akbar is when we joy, when we say it. When someone comes to Islam, we say it. When we are in hardship, we say it. And when we cry, we say it. When we go down, bowing down, we say Allahu Akbar. When we get away, get up from the sajda, we actually say Allahu Akbar. And, and subhanAllah, what does it teach us? It teaches us, Mr. Jendrick, that Muslims are humble. Unlike you, the white uh, races, thugs that you guys are, that there's no humility in you. And we, Allah teaches us to be humble, to be hu show the humility that God is great from every creation on the earth. And that's who we are. And, and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us. And it makes our iman more strengthened. Why? Because when I say Allahu Akbar, I know I am meager. I am a weak person and I need someone who's great in my life and that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let me tell you also Robert Jenrick and I, that's my research and I can't go wrong on this one in Psalms uh, chapter number 145 verse number 3 your Jesus said remind of the greatest Lord and he said the greatest is the Lord which actually means in Arabic Allahu Akbar and that's for you inshallah so that, that's uh, my rant is over. Look, I got emotional, but I, I really was upset when I heard it. And I wanted to actually make it. So inshallah, there will be a video for Robert Jenrick so he can listen to it. And you know what hurts me more? Because Robert Jenrick is in line to become the Tory leader of the UK government. He's in line to take Rishi Sunak's job. And that hurts more. Why? Because you've got these racist Islamophobes to become the leader and uh, UK is not like you guys you're only 800,000 we are 4.2 million Muslims in UK 4.2 million Muslims so it's not just a mere number that we're speaking about you know so it's not that we're saying we're not even a million over here so over there we make some of the the, the places are only Muslims only Muslims you know, if you went to Leeds, Hare Hills Lane, it's only Muslims. You find only uh, the Muslims over there. If you went to Bradford, some of the towns over there, in Leicester, the south of Leicester, only Muslims over there. And, and subhanAllah, we're doing a great job, inshallah. Anyways, let's come back, guys. Uh, I promise you half an hour, never believe my promise. Whenever I say something like that, it never happens. I haven't even started the surah yet. Uh, it's only half an hour, okay. Anyways, uh, now... SubhanAllah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after 23 years of holidays for the kuffar, they had a 23 year holiday period, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said your holiday is over now. Now I am freeing myself and the Prophet from you. And this is what the start of the Bara'atu min Allahi wa Rasulihi, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that I free myself and the Prophet from you. That we are freeing ourselves from the polytheist. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Now let's go exactly to ayah number 14 because this is not an entire tafsir, so I'll be jumping up and down. So inshallah, in ayah number 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not staying away uh, from. Uh, scaring the disbelievers. He goes right in ayah number 14 and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that what he's going to do to these people. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قَاتِلُوهُمْ وَيُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ وَيُخْزِهِمْ وَيَنْصُرُكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَيَشْفِي صُدُورَ قَوْمٍ مُؤْمِنِينَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so fight them and Allah will punish them at your hands and put them to shame and Allah will send the help to overcome them. Now Allah is saying, take your swords out now. You've lived a life of submission and we did not say anything to you. 
Now you have to go and you have to fight these people and you now show them the sword. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, clearly says to them, uh, to them. And now moving on, understand this surah is the ninth uh, ch chapter of the Quran and also it has 129 ayahs. Okay, uh, the Hafiz actually read the last two ayahs, which are really, which are the beautiful ayahs about the Prophet, and inshallah I'll be mentioning them as well. And then he read another beautiful ayah, which is also not far away from the last ayahs, they're close to 120 ayahs. They're speaking about the qualities of the ones who give themselves. The ones that Allah is saying, they gave their life for Allah. And then Allah counts their qualities. Inshallah we will also look at those as well. So understand, subhanAllah, uh, the, this is um, Allah is telling the pagans now just before this surah this is the last time in the history I want you to imagine this the pagans and the Muslims are doing Hajj together they're both doing Tawaf together he sent Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an Rasulullah as he made him the leader and he said you go do Hajj because we're allowed to do Hajj and this is pagans doing Hajj with the Muslims that's the last time Allah is saying that was it that's the end of that pagans, you taking control of the Kaaba and you coming around it. Now the next year when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa goes, there'll be no pagans over there. Because this is what the surah is now going to speak about. So that was the last time they came and after that pagans were expelled. And this was the largest campaign ever. I want you to, uh, uh, to understand. Now there be no, Allah clearly is saying, what we are seeing today from the government, the Saudi government, we don't want to make ghuluf, but you're seeing that the pagans are now coming inside the Kaaba. Allah clearly in this surah is saying they're not allowed even to come close, even to be in the vicinity of this place, because no mushrik should be allowed over here. And if we go uh, to the eye number 17, to eye number 22, uh, Allah clearly uh, mentions over here مَا كَانَ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ أَنْ يَأْمُرُوا الْمَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ شَاهِدِينَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ بِالْكُفْرِ That uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it is not for the polytheists to maintain the masjid. مَا كَانَ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ I said your job is done now. Allah will not even give you any chance to come closer to maintain this masjid anymore. It's not your job anymore. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the quality of the believers, the one who should maintain the masjid. Quite particularly, the ayah is for um, uh, Masjid Haram, but this is for us as well. If you want to establish the masjid, this is the ayah for you, the ayah number 18, beautiful ayah. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ الْمَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ The one who actually wants to establish the masjids of Allah, they should actually believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they should believe in the last day. وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَىٰ وَآتَ الزَّكَىٰ And they should be the ones who establish prayer. Now subhanAllah, I did the hadith arba'een and I go into... Uh, uh, you know, the, the gems. I want to go into a quick gem over here. I said, Aqama Salah. Allah always said, Aqama Salah. Well, why does Allah does not use the word Ada'a Salah? Do you know, Ada'a Salah means to uh, perform prayers. Well, why does Allah use the word Aqama Salah? The reason being is because Salah is not a, just a physical element. It's not a physical element. Muhammad al-Rida, one of the famous scholars of Egypt, there are some uh, ifs and buts, we're not here to speak about his ifs and buts. He said 90% of the Muslims don't know how to pray. Because they just pray. They don't know how to pray. Because they do not pray with their hearts, with their spiritual being. They only pray physically. They only know how to pray physically. And that's true. When you see some of the people praying today, you don't even know where Imam is. SubhanAllah, uh, 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 the brother sits over here. He sent me a video from Haram. And this was in, the, uh, in Taraweeh. And the Imam read the ayah of Sajda. And everyone, uh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, Imam read the ayah of Sajda. The Imam went into Sajda, everyone went into Ruku. The entire masjid. We don't even know what's happening. Can you imagine like, and, and that's why, and then we are also uh, oblivious that sometimes Imam, like Imam Sheikh Al-Bani left a Salah in a small masjid in Medina, and he did not read Surah Sajda on, in Fajr Salah, 
and in, in on the Jum'ah Fajr Salah. Generally, all Imams generally read that surah. He did not read it. Everyone went inside sujood and he's in ruku. They thought he's reading surah sajda. And that's how we are. And it is so true. Aqam as salah and they say, Ata zakah. وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That also that they are the ones who fear no one. وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That they only fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So only these people should establish the masajid. Also I'm going to speak about the people who should not establish masajid. They're also mentioned over here. Masjid Dirar. And this is why, that's why this is one of my favorite surahs. When someone gave me the name Surah Tawbah, mashallah, I can speak about so many political events in this surah as well. In itself. Anyways, moving on, these are the surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about establishing of hajj as well. The hajj should be, uh, these are ayahs, so you can write them down in your notes, 17 to 22. It will actually give you the ayahs uh, which will help you to know that who should be establishing this, uh, the masjids and who should be looking after the hajj and all, or all of these things. Okay. Now moving on, ayah number 24 is an amazing ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you do not just give your life for your children, for your siblings, for your this and for your that. It's a long ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says uh, in this ayah that قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ عَبَاءُكُمْ وَعَبْنَاءُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَاتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all these things that you're doing, all these things, they're not going to benefit you. They're not going to benefit you. You know, if you are only living your life for these people. And uh, then Allah says, وَتِجَارَةٍ تَخْشَوْنَ قَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِحَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ that You have to sacrifice in the path of Allah as well. You have to put your money for the sake of Allah. You have to come for the path of Allah. Don't just think that you're uh, doing, and these are the easy things that you can do. You know, the more share of your life, the more share over you is deserving to Allah. Is deserving to Allah. And a lot of times we actually forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Al awladukum fitna. Awalukum fitna. You know, awlad is fitna. And I, I, I mean it. SubhanAllah, I, I give this example. It's a lame example, but I always give. All these people, all of you, the married ones, when you were married, your life you had so much time for yourself. So much time. You and your wife, that was the only time that you could do whatever. You could watch whatever, you could go to any masjid. The day your child was born, it became fitna for you. Why? Because you had to live according to his timetable or her timetable. Now, you did not have the time that you had. That was the first stage of fitna. Remember the time that you went to sleep in the night and you were so upset, you told your wife, your boss, is, your boss will kick you out if you don't get to sleep and you were sleeping on the couch and your wife was with that little child. So, awlad is fitna. Now, not the Pakistani fitna, right? The Arabic fitna is something else. Okay, it's a test. It's a calamity. Not the fitna that we have. You know, we have a different connotation. It's like Sahil Adim calling someone jahil on the TV. You know, the Arabic word jahil does not have the connotation what the Urdu word has. If you call someone jahil, it actually will punch your daylights out in Urdu. Jahil is not a right word. It's, it's actually a derogatory word. But in Arabic, jahil is not derogatory. Jahil is majhul, someone who does not know. He's ignorant. But exactly Sahil Adim knew why he was saying that word. So he knew exactly why he said it. But with all due respect, subhanAllah, this is what in our country, mashallah, everyone wants that. Uh, there's, a, there's a famous phrase in Urdu, but naam na honge to kya naam na hoga. So exactly, they work on this principle. Like if you're not going to be, uh, uh, Badnam is like um, humiliated or someone who's not uh, considered, not taken in, if you, in virtuous uh, character, you still will be famous somehow. I think that's the only way I can get to 1K because being a good person, I'm not getting to 1K and I'm still struggling. Maybe I need to make some controversial videos about me. So people start searching about me and in that way they will start subscribing to me. Uh, so... Understand, the more if you need the pleasure of Allah, uh, the pleasure of Allah is going to come by giving your life for the sake of Allah. 
You dedicate your life for the sake of Allah. You go and do the things what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a mention in ayah number 24. Now subhanAllah, trivia for you and I will answer this question at the end. Now this is a beautiful part of Quran, the ayah number 25 and 26. Now all of us, it's a slap on our face, this ayah. Uh, Allah actually mentions what is the ayah number 25 except for uh, the Hufaz. What does Allah mention in that? وَيَوْمَ Hunain. Now this is the only one of the two battles which is mentioned by name in the Qur'an. There's no other battle that's mentioned by name in Qur'an. That's a trivia for you for later. Inshallah you can come back to me at the end of the lecture which is the other, which is the other battle which is mentioned by name. That's, this is the first one. Okay? This is the first one mentioned by name in the Qur'an. Okay, Allah actually mentions about Hunayn. Allah gives, this is beautiful ayahs number 25 to 26. Allah mentions over here quite clearly, indeed Allah gave the victory to the believers on the battle of Hunayn and Muslims had great numbers. You know when Muslims went out to battle of Hunayn, they had 12,000 Muslims. And they were now going out to fight the, uh, the Arabs of the Khwazim and the Taif. Okay, they were big numbers as well, but not as big as the Muslims, there are 12,000. Now they actually were deluded with the numbers, as we, me and you were deluded, two billion, two billion. SubhanAllah, we have 600 plus children in the school. How many parents turned up for this lecture? That's a question I'm asking you. It's like, you know, it's like uh, 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 the, the leader of, uh, the UKIP party, um, I forget his first name, his name is Farage. So he, when he wanted to incite hatred, Nigel, Nigel. So Nigel Farage, he wanted to incite hatred and he's like, I'm only asking a question, was it a Muslim or not who killed the children? So you know when you want to incite something, so you ask a question. So I've learned this from Nigel Farage. So I'm only asking a question, where are the other 400 parents? You know, I'm not saying that they're not doing anything productive. So, but this is what Allah is saying. They are going into battle of Hanayn and they were deluded. Deluded looking at the numbers. They are, no one can defeat us. SubhanAllah, if you know the battle of Hanayn and Allah actually speaks about over here, on number 25 and 26, when they go into the battle of Hanayn, what happens? As they arrive in the battle of Hanayn, they have laid, the, the disbelievers, they've laid traps for them. And Muslims start, they start running. They start running until Al-Abbas, he starts screaming and calling the Muslims that are you going to betray the Prophet and run away? Because they were beaten initially. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, reminds of the favor that it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that have given you advantage on that day. In this vast earth that you have, Allah is the one who actually gave you advantage. It's Allah that makes you uh, victorious. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understand uh, Muslims and my brothers and sisters do not be impressed by the numbers. Numbers do nothing. SubhanAllah, two billion people. What have you done for uh, the, the Palestinians? Nothing. You've done nothing. I mean, alhamdulillah, we, we do what we do. But in terms of their freedom or anything. And mashallah, Muslims, you know, with little victories, we get excited. And we are so happy with the victory that we've achieved in Bangladesh. And we make dua for the people of Bangladesh. Wallahi. SubhanAllah, everyone's saying in August great things happen. I'm yet to believe that on 14th August something great happened. Yet to believe. But I, I am not taking the narrative away. They said Afghanistan kicked out the Americans, the Taliban. And that was August as well, two years ago. Uh, the, the Bangladeshis kicked out Hasina. In August as well, that was August, just a few days ago. So that's great things happening. And uh, the 14th August, another great thing happened. Uh, but subhanAllah, and, and uh, the, 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 you see, you know, all these uh, patriot, uh, patriotic Pakistanis, and they keep on saying, where are the students? You know, the youthy, youthy. And, and you see all these messages you're reading. So it seems like they're telling the people of Pakistan to come on the street, the students, and to get Imran Khan out of the prison. But subhanAllah, uh, let me tell on the camera to all the people, uh, the Pakistan's army is not like the army of Bangladesh. It's not that like the army of India. It's not like the army of Afghanistan. Pakistan's army is something. So 
anyone that's uh, thinking of coming to the streets, it has to think again because in Pakistan's history, it's always the army that's controlled the country. But having said that, I'm not saying it cannot happen. But understand, I'm not a believer in boycott, protest, if you know me. Those things only bring more blood and more problems. And most of these uh, case studies that you do, the Arab Spring and whatnot, most of the, the things that have changed, they've come back to their normality again. So you look at Egypt, they were so happy after that, what they got is worse than Husni Mubarak. Worse than Husni Mubarak. In, 19, in 2019, the British, uh, sorry, the, the Egyptian pound was about seven, eight dollars of Australian dollars. Now it's close to 50 dollars. In five years. And mashallah, for us uh, Pakistanis, we don't even know what the count is at the moment. And I think it's 200, something like that. But good for us, you know, our uh, uh, extended relatives think we are, we are very generous nowadays. So when we send money, they think, oh, mashallah, well, my cousin has become more generous. Not knowing we are, we're giving the same amount of money, but it's, it's converting into more. May Allah help us, you know, may Allah help us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us that do not put your trust in the numbers. Numbers are nothing. The trust comes from Allah. So don't think that you went on the street and you changed the government. That was nothing. The governments are changed by Allah and the power and the trust always comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Now subhanAllah, you need to also understand, um, uh, then uh, there is a beautiful ayah in the Quran uh, about uh, the Ghassanids. The Ghassanids um, are basically a, a story about, um, in this story is about Tabuk, which is about three people, Ka'b ibn Malik, and uh, Al-Hilal ibn Umayyah, and Murara, I can't remember Murara's uh, last name. So these are the three people, they did not participate in the battle. So Allah actually speaks about them at the time of the hypocrites. So subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about them, uh, that they are the ones who did not participate in Tabuk and Tabuk was a big battle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to everyone that you need to come out and you need to fight regardless of who you are. And uh, this is uh, more mentioned right towards the end of the surah in ayah number 102 and, and those. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have forgiven. This is a homework for you guys. You go home and you actually have to read the story about these guys. I'm not going to give you uh, the story about this guy, uh, these guys, but I'll tell you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, did. Allah mentioned them with the three that they were the ones who actually went out and they said the truth to the Prophet. Now subhanAllah, everyone that was coming to the Prophet, they came up with excuses, all kinds of excuses that this happened, this happened. You know, our children, they come to the teacher, they have excuses. My cat died, my dog ate the homework, that, that kind of excuses. Exactly, this is the kind of excuses that they were giving. So, Kaab ibn Malik said, I was the most articulate person. If I was to give an excuse, I would have given it. But I got scared because I knew this is the Nabi of Allah. If I say anything, Allah will reveal an ayah and I'll become the liar from the Quran. So I said the truth. Oh Allah, I did not go in the battle because I was procrastinating. I was lazy. And he told the truth. And one of the things that we need to understand, uh, let's not procrastinate. We always, this is a message for all of us sitting over here. We always say, I will do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And subhanAllah, Allah actually reveals an ayah of the tactic of the Kufar, ayah number 75 and the 77, that the Mushrikeen said, they, these Munafiqeen, not the Mushrikeen, the Munafiqeen said, Oh Allah, if you give us money, then we will spend in your cause. And subhanAllah, Allah gave them money and they became lazy and they did not give anything. You know, sometimes we say, Oh Allah, if you give me the house in Kentes, I'll come to Salah for five days, uh, sorry, five times a day. And subhanAllah, you're living in Kentes, but you still haven't seen the masjid yet. So don't make those promises because we fell into uh, uh, nifaq, we become a munafiq. Don't make these promises. Allah is saying, don't say the things you will never do. Because if Allah gives you something, He will test you. So for example, Allah, if you give me a Lamborghini, I'll drive to the masjid every day. 
And subhanAllah, you get a Lamborghini, the only way place you're driving is to the Sydney city. They haven't been to the masjid yet. So do not say that. So Allah will test you in that regard. So this was one of the nifaq, uh, one of the tactics of the disbelievers. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that because they had nifaq, going into the ayah number 79, Allah says that these uh, munafiqun also made fun of the people when they gave little for the sake of Allah. You know, there were people who did not have anything. They just came with some dates. They said to Rasulullah, because Rasulullah, I want you to imagine, it is a difficult time. Tabuk is a time, you are a farmer, and it's a time for harvesting. You have to harvest and the dates will come out. If you go for the battle, it's a long journey. It's a 30 day journey. You have to go to all the way to Ghatfan, to the Romans on the border, the north of Medina. That's going to take you 30 days because you're going to Sham. And then you are going to come back in 30 days. And Wallahu Alam, how long you're going to stay over there. So it's a two month, it's a long battle. And that's why our youth, they love long hair because Rasulullah did not cut his hair from the seal. I had long hair in that time as well. So they say, oh, I'm following the Sunnah. MashaAllah, that's the sunnah they love, the long hair. And they, they want to be like the Prophet. But every other sunnah, they, they just discount themselves from there. So he, it's a long journey. So imagine if you come back, you're going to miss the harvest season. You're not going to be able to grow your crops again. You're going to miss that. So that was, and it's a hot time as well. You're in the peak summer of Medina and you're going up north and it, it will be really hot. And so your animals, you need more energy for that. So all these things are not working in the favor of the believers, but the believers, you know, they wanted to go and they um, gave whatever they had. Some people came with the dates and Allah mentions in ayah number 79 that uh, the munafiqun, the one who did not give the money in the first place, they started making fun. Oh, you bring so less for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَخَّرَ اللَّهُ مِنْكُمْ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what their intention are and Allah is the one, who, they know you, the ones who are making fun as well and your intentions as well. So brothers, never belittle what you give. Even if it's a dollar you give for the sake of Allah, it's your intention. You know, don't belittle what you give. Sometimes it's only a dollar that you can give. But Allah knows your intention. So ne never be like, you know, oh, oh you know what, I, I can't give it. And, and I'm not able to give it. So don't be like that, inshallah. Don't, don't belittle what you give. So inshallah, be like that. Also, one of the other um, uh, things, uh, let's go to the controversial ayah that we spoke about, the ayah number five of Surah Tawbah. And uh, this is the one that uh, the disbelievers, they love it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah uh, clearly says, that what Allah wants from the believers. They, it's, this has a context, okay? You can't just say that uh, Allah is just saying it that way. So see, understand, Allah says, فَسِيحُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَرْبَعَةَ أَشْهَرُ That you only have four months left, and after that, um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, then we will treat you the way we'll treat you. Now, going to the ayah number five, which they love, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقَاتِلُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْثُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ وَخُذُوهُمْ وَحْثُرُهُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherever you see them, you find them. And you hold them and you actually take their lives. So there's a context over here. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, now favoritism is over. You gave them time, you go in a battlefield. You know, Israel has a right to defend himself or herself or whatever. They always keep on saying, now... The people are in the battle, so they're going in a battle. And so Muslims have got the right to defend themselves as well. So they've got the right to also fight the people that will fight. So Allah is clearly saying, you go now and you fight them. If they fight you, you kill them, you fight them. Also, subhanAllah, the disbelievers, they do not even know the Quran, the context of Quran. What does Allah say in ayah number six? And if they come to you and they tell you that give us respite, we did not get chance to leave the land and give us respite, then give them refuge. And go with them and take them to the borders. Take them to the borders and let them leave the land. SubhanAllah, this is our religion. We're not saying just to go kill them, but if they say we didn't have time to go run away from here, so if they come to you now, tell them, 
you know what, we'll give you refuge, we'll take you out of the land. You can't be here now. You can either be a Muslim to stay in Mecca, if you're not a Muslim, we will give you chance to leave. We'll not fight you. And subhanAllah, Fatah Mecca, when it happened, you all know, no one died. Except for there was one uh, skirmish between Khalid and Walid, and when he came inside, and he had this um, a kafir actually attacked him, and then he just slayed him. And Rasulullah after them, he told them not to uh, fight anyone. And then they said, we need time. Said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, there's only two places that you have refuge. If I see anyone anywhere else, you will have no refuge. What were the two places? In the Haram, and the other one was the house of Abu Sufyan. And subhanAllah, can you imagine the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam? This is Rasulullah, subhanAllah. Today when we get angry, we are unhappy with someone, someone's our enemy, we will actually take him to the hellfire, the gates of hellfire. But subhanAllah, this is the Prophet. Abu Sufyan came to fight him. His wife killed the uncle. He was, she was behind the killing of Hamza. What does he say? Because he's married to Um Habiba. Um Habiba is the daughter of Abu Sufyan. And what does he say? He knows the, even, you know, the compassion side that my wife also still loves the father, regardless of who my father is. So what does he say? You go to Abu Sufyan's house, you're safe. No one will touch you. That's a refuge. This is ayah number six. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says that. If they come, Mushrikeena istajaraka fa'ajiruhu hatta yasma'u kalam Allahi thumma ablighu manhu that, you know, if they come, they seek refuge, it's tajarak Allah. They, they come in the name of Allah to seek refuge, give them the refuge. Let them go. You know, give them the chance to leave the land, okay? This is what it is mentioned over there. Also, um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, verse number 11. Now, subhanAllah, they don't know the context. That's why, inshallah, the context of the Quran is very important. Allah now says, after you gave them refuge in verse number 11, Allah says, if they now want to come to Islam, seek forgiveness for them. Ask forgiveness and they become Muslim, embrace them. Now they are like you. Subhanallah, these are the people who actually were Abu Sufyan, the wife of Abu Sufyan. And the guy Talha ibn Abi Talha, the one who had the keys of Kaaba. Do you know that story, the amazing story? He used to make uh, faces when Rasulullah would come. You know, subhanAllah, this is the, how the tables turn. When Rasulullah said, one day he came and he said, give us the key, I want to pray. And he said, you know, we have to give the keys to the low life people like you who are corrupting the Kaaba with our gods in there. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is a human. He got angry. You know what he said? He said, the day will come when I will have the keys and you will come and beg me to get the keys. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayahs to Rasulullah to reprimand him. Allah says the key is the amana of the one uh, that we gave it to. And you will never get the keys. Allah reprimanded Rasulullah. And subhanAllah when Rasulullah got the keys of Kaaba, he said call him. And he gave him the keys. And Allah, he said, Allah gives you the keys. Allah gave you the keys. This is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not act on his desires, on his whims. We, subhanAllah, if someone took my, the key from me, from my house, I'll tell you what, I'll take him to the gates of hellfire. That's how we are. But this is not how uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. And moving on, uh, subhanAllah, um, that I'm, and also see, understand, um, even they were bl bloodthirsty and everything, the like of what were the likes of it, even then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, you know, we're not going to fight them. We're going to make tawbah. We're going to make uh, repentance for these guys. Now also, uh, another uh, people, the sign of the people that did not have money. And this is also mentioned uh, in uh, ayah number 77. These are called bukka'un. Bukka'un, they mentioned by the, uh, the word bukka in the Quran that they were crying. So they did not have the animal because it's really hot. They're not able to go. So they did not have the animal to travel. Rasulullah said, you're excused now, you can't go. So they cried that they were not able to go. Allah mentioned them in the Quran by the word that they were crying. And also Allah subhanahu wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is mentioned in ayah number 91, 92 about their sincerity. Allah says, 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah is saying that you will get the reward of us going to Tabuk and fighting the enemy. That is what Allah has written for you. There's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا That if you want to do an action and you're barred from doing that action uh, and Allah will still give you the reward for it. So subhanAllah brothers have high intentions. Go tonight sleeping with the intention of praying Qiyamul Layl. If you did not wake up, Allah will give you the reward for that. But don't go with the intention, I'm not going to wake up. The Imam said, I'll still get the reward. No alarms there. You, got the, you, the, you know the Imam said, there's a loophole. So the intention inside, you've got the intention, you're saying something and the heart's saying something. Don't go with that intention. You want to wake up, inshallah. I tell you what, you, don't, you cannot pray Qiyamul Layl. And I'm not saying you don't have to, you, uh, you know, you have to pray it. Uh, to do it today and this and this and that. No, I'm not saying that. You know how uh, the, the disbelievers have a weekend. You know, they've got a weekend, they enjoy themselves in the night and the Friday night is the big night for them. For you, inshallah, Friday night should be the Qiyamul Layl night. Why? Because Saturday you have no work. Start with one day a week. I said, one day a week. On Friday, go to bed early. Go to bed early. And you wake up and you pray for the sake of Allah. I tell you, you will inshallah enjoy the beauty of Quran. And you know, I'm a believer that you can have an iPad in your hand or a phone in your hand. If you're not a hafiz, you can read Quran. And I tell you, I make your life easy. If you can pray Qiyamul Layl every day, then you finish your Quran in the night prayers. That will be your reading. And to understand what you read in the night prayers is you will choose another time in the day to read the translation. So you hold your phone, you start with Alif Lam Meem, every night you read one ruku in one hour, one rakah, the second ruku in the second rakah, inshallah you finish the Quran like that. And this will be your habit. You enjoy the Quran. You're standing, you're reading the Quran and you're enjoying the words as well. And then inshallah, let's say after Maghrib you read the translation or you're done. Subhanallah, this is the believer. This is how the believer should be. You should be spending time in the things which are productive which actually will give you more reward rather than wasting your time on the seasons. You know, shaitan's work, Netflix, seasons. Plays with your brain. Understand, our life is not like a season. We have to work and we have to have that patience. You know, when you work on seasons, you lose your patience. You have to be patient. Allah will give you, Allah will not give you. Allah will test you. So sincerity we learn from these ayahs, even if you do not do the action, you're not able to do it, Allah will still give you. Now subhanAllah, I was speaking about the ayah number 118, which was Ka'b ibn Malik, you can write it down. This is the surah uh, that you need to go inshallah and read about the story. In the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually is so happy with these guys. Can you imagine, uh, and this is something, um, I actually also have a lecture and in that way, you can listen to my channel and subscribe if you haven't uh, subscribed yet. But Ka'b ibn Malik in that, uh, in, uh, um, uh, uh, in the end, when Allah reveals the ayah, he's so happy, he's praying on the roof, he's so lonely. After the 30th day, Allah has told their wives to leave the houses as well. Allah has actually told their wives, you can't stay in the houses and you are now not even in the marriage of your husband. The only wife is allowed to stay is uh, Hilal ibn Umayyah, the older guy. His wife says to the Prophet, I cannot leave my husband, he's old and we have no physical desire. I'm not going to be sleeping physically with my husband. I'm only going to be looking after the food and whatever his needs are. Rasulullah said, you can't touch him, you can't be physical, but you can stay in the house. And everyone else, they leave and their wives are gone. And on the 40th day, Allah reveals the ayah, ayah number 118. And he's praying on his roof and he's wearing his last cloak. In the entire month, he's giving something out from his house. He's got no money left. He's got nothing left. The last cloak or the clothing that he's wearing, he goes in his house and he throws that away to the man who comes with the ayah. And he's so happy. He doesn't even have clothes now. And he, go, he shouts to his neighbor to give him something so he can run to the masjid. These are the believers. That's how they spend for the sake of Allah. So Allah actually mentions in uh, ayah number one, um, uh, you know, uh, 118, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَى ثَلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا The ones who were left behind. خُلِّفُوا خَالِفُ you know, they were behind. 
So hatta idha daqat alayhimul ardu bima ruhibat wa daqat alayhim anfusahum wa dhannu alla malja min Allahi illa ilayh thumma ta'ba alayhum liyatubu. Allah says that they kept on working hard and they were distressed, they knew they were guilty until daqat alayhim. And they kept on working hard. What was the, wor the working hard tawbah? That's for all of us. When we make mistake, go to Allah, make that tawbah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's forgiving. And Allah actually gives an amazing ayah right after that, 119. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah is with the ones who are truthful. Something that we learn from this, never lie, never lie. Even if you make a mistake, say the truth. We teach lies to our children and this is subconsciously. You know, uh, the, the, the greatest Pakistani lie. When you don't want to speak to your friend and your, his friend calls and then you say to your son, say to them, I'm in the bathroom. And subhanAllah, your son is so innocent, my father is saying he's in the bathroom. Now your son's mashallah more innocent. My father is saying he's in the bathroom. So your, father's, your son's actually blown your cover. So don't say that. Why? Because you now subconsciously taught your son how to lie. Now guess what? He's going to do the same. He learned from you. You taught him the first lesson to lie. It's not that his friends taught him that. You taught him that lesson. So inshallah, something that we want to learn, uh, we always want to actually uh, be truthful uh, to the cause. Now, Imam actually read the ayahs, one, 111 and 112. That these are the ayahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amazing. Allah actually is talking about the qualities of the believers, that they are um, asking for forgiveness, that they are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are in the ruku, they are in the sujood, uh, and they are uh, uh, that they are telling to do the enjoining good uh, when, they are stopping you from doing the evil and they guard themselves and they stop where Allah has told them to stop that's it, that's a, guy, that's a line that Allah has drawn and before the ayah before this ayah was a beautiful ayah that he read was inna Allah al mu'minin that these believers have sold themselves believers have sold themselves now subhanallah selling themselves does not mean why are they Allah saying sold themselves over here yuqatiluna fi sabilillahi fa yuqatiluna wa yuqatilun that they are fighting the ones who are fighting uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the enemies of Allah so basically the idea over here is that we only have to pray brothers we only have to fast we only have to do hajj if we've got the money we have to believe in Allah Allah is not asking for anything Allah is saying this is selling yourself you know when you learn about Islam this is selling yourself if you are doing bare minimum Allah will give you all those things Allah is not saying to go jump off the cliff and that's selling yourself it's bare minimum in our life subhanallah uh, uh, today for the children I prepared the khutbah there are 1440 minutes in a day how many minutes? 1440 minutes and subhanallah Allah is only telling you to spend 40 minutes for me while you're praying 40 minutes that's it and I tell you what some of us only need 10 minutes to pray five times daily 10 minutes mashallah my son mashallah isha, isha salah two minutes I don't know how fast he prays um, Fajr, but Isha is two minutes. So, mashallah, you know the, the, the speed he has. Usain Bolt would actually can't beat him in Salah. If he's like Usain Bolt on this side and my son on this side, I'll tell you what, my son will beat him with eyes closed. So that, this is not what Allah wants from you. Allah wants from you 40 minutes. Give the time the Salah deserves. You need to pray the 12 Sunnahs, and then you need to pray the fara'id. Okay, there's how many fard? Six. And then you add another four. That's your ten there. And then you add the three and then you add the four. Seventeen. Okay, all in all, you've got 29 rakahs that you need to pray. How many? 29. For the 29, if you give one minute each to every uh, 29, that will make it about 60 minutes. 
you know, 29 rakahs, sorry, that will give, make it 30 minutes. And then you can beautify the other 10 minutes in it. Okay? Beautify the 10 minutes and then you'll get more closer. Inshallah, uh, for us, we just love. You know, uh, uh, the favorite surah of uh, us all sitting over here, our surah is ikhlas. That's like the great surah that we know. And it's, it's, it's like we say the surah, my favorite surah, ikhlas. Like, and when you ask them, what's the meaning of ikhlas? No, I don't know. But it's my favorite surah. That's the thing, you know, we have not invested in the meaning of it, but that's our favorite surah. Now, moving on, inshallah. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those believers who've actually sold themselves. Now, moving towards the final part, and this is uh, an important part, 107 to 110. Now, subhanallah, Abdullah ibn Ubayy al-Sulul is a crazy man. A crazy man who hates Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is Rasul munafiq the head of the munafiqeen. He's found the hack of how to get closer to the believers. What's the hack? I need to build my own masjid. I need to invite people to pray in that masjid. And then I need to delude people saying that I am the leader. Because he was inspiring, aspiring for leadership right from the word go. And he did not become the leader. You know that. He was about to become the leader. The prophet becomes the leader. What does he do? He set up a masjid. And that's the masjid, Masjid Dirar. Now he wants Rasulullah to cut the ribbon inside the masjid. To come to the masjid and to cut the ribbon. I, I apologize guys, I only need five more minutes, inshallah I'm done. So he wants Rasulullah to cut the ribbon and to uh, make this masjid. Why? Because masjid, the people get a say. You know when you build a masjid and a community center, then you become the leader because you're setting up events. People are coming to those places and you have a say. So basically, Abdullah ibn Ubayy Salul wants that. And he tells Rasulullah, please, can you come and pray in the masjid? And Rasulullah said, you know what, we're going to Tabuk. I have no qualms and I'm going to come and pray in your masjid. I have no problems. I'll come inshallah. But then Rasulullah, when he's back, he's on the way back from Tabuk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends ayah after ayah. And subhanallah, Allah annihilates uh, this masjid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is... Uh, says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is not masjid, this is masjid dirar. This is a masjid dirar meaning, this is a masjid of conflict. This is a masjid that's built, this is a masjid of uh, nifaq. This is the masjid of hypocrisy. They're only building this masjid, so they spread kufr. Can you imagine, with masjid, Allah mentions kufr. Allah is saying they will actually uh, spread their kufr. They will be tafriq, they will divide the community. And also, they will bring this masjid against the fight, harib, ilallah. They fight Allah and they will fight the Prophet from this masjid. And subhanallah, I tell you what, I'm not going to say the name, but I'll tell you what, there are so many people in today's day and age, so many people, that they use community centers, their platforms, their YouTubes, to actually divide the Muslims. That's what they do. Subhanallah, their job, their entire job, is to have these centers and to divide the Muslims and to give the wrong message. And subhanallah, uh, you know, uh, they spread their evil and they, they call to their evil. And it's the political leaders as well sometimes. They have Islamic banners, I'm building this, and I'm going to follow this Sharia, and then they get votes, people come vote for them, and after that they forget the Sharia. They come with the banners of Islam, they come with these flags of Islam. Whoever does that, Allah is saying there's a strong warning for them. And then in the contrary to that, Allah says, if you really want a masjid that was built on Iman, that's Masjid Quba. That's the place that you want to go. That's where the believers are. That's where the believers... Uh, and that's why, mashallah, some of the Imams, they love the, the name Masjid Quba. So they name their Masjid Masjid Quba. Just by naming the Masjid does not make it Masjid Quba. The intention should be there. So, so that's uh, for everyone over here. No matter what Islamic thing that we do in our lives, our intention is very important. What are we really doing it? Are we going to be using the banner of Islam just to bring people and so the people come and then we, you know, and, and subhanAllah, then we manipulate people, abuse people. SubhanAllah, there's so many organizations in today as we sit. They use the name of Islam, they build masajids 
and they build communities and after that, mashallah, there's nothing. You don't even see anything after that. So may Allah help us and, and may Allah allow us to fear this. Now subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks uh, about uh, the, the category. So if you are a, want to become an imam and if you want to learn the fiqh, in this surah there's fiqh as well. So what's the fiqh in this surah? In ayah number 60, Allah mentions the categories of zakat. They're all entire eight categories. So how do we know who to give zakat? Ayah number 16, one after the other, one after the other, the eight categories are mentioned. Okay, I'm not going to go into details very now. And also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this surah, in ayah number 36, that we are a civilization. We're not like a, just a, a community that got up and we don't even have our system. We've got everything. Allah says, we even have got a calendar. The day I created the world, I also made a calendar for you. And I gave you 12 months. And out of those 12 months, I gave you four sacred months. SubhanAllah, our religion is such a great civilization, it even taught you what feet to enter in the toilet. Do you know, I pose a trivia question to you. Why do you say Wafranaka when you come out? I'll ask you later, inshallah. Ask my question to you. When you come out of the bathroom, why do you say, oh Allah, forgive me? Ask the question, and inshallah, I'll be asking answers later. Now, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Now, the most optimistic verse. For me, and I said to you, this is my favorite verse, and this should be also your favorite verse as well. And this is, subhanAllah, whenever I read this verse, it reminds me of you. And I don't know what's your circumstances with Allah, but it definitely reminds me of myself. Now, subhanAllah, we, who do we spoke about? The mushrikun, bad guys, munafiqun, bad guys. The, you know, the real people that fought in the sake of Allah, the muhajirun, the ansar, the great people. Now. Allah actually speaks about another category, people like me. Allah says, Subhanallah. Allah Akbar. You know, it's emotional words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and then the, the, the people, the akharun, you know, the, the people in the end, that they are the ones, they have sins and they also have good deeds. It's mixed, it's jumbled up. They got good deeds, they got bad deeds as well. It's all jumbled up. And subhanAllah, that's what they are. And then Allah says, Asa Allahu an aytubu yatubu alayhim. And they seek forgiveness. And let them know, Asa Allah. You know when Allah uses the word Asa in, in Arabic, which means perhaps, Ibn Abbas says, when Allah says, Asa Allahu, that means Allah will forgive you. Allah says, perhaps Allah will forgive, accept their tawbah, and Allah is Ghafoor Rahim will forgive them. And subhanAllah, whenever I read this verse, when the Imam reads it, I get some hope, Allah will forgive us. SubhanAllah, we sit over here, I tell you what, our, we're all jumbled up. Our good deeds, bad deeds, everything is together. We don't even know, we're not Sahabis. Allah did not reveal the ayah radiallahu anhum radu an for me. Allah did not say to me or you that Allah is pleased with us. And subhanAllah, we should be happy. So every day, inshallah, when you go home, memorize this verse, ayah number 102. Read it in your dua. Wallah, I am from the akharun. Wa khallatu. You know, I've got a mixture. Wa zunubihim and, and sayyat and hasanat. It's all a mixture, Allah. But you are the ones who forgive Allah. And subhanAllah, this is something that we need to and understand whenever Allah says perhaps. Now moving on to the ayah number 122, right towards the end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over here mentions a group of people that will remain behind. Now we're coming to the end inshallah. And these are the great people that will remain behind. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says over here that's for all of us to understand that not everyone will go to jihad. Not everyone will do this. Not everyone will do that. So Allah over here is saying that there will be Ya ladina amanu that there will be people wa ma kana al-mu'minina li yanfiru kafatan falawla nafara min kulli firqatin minhum ta'ifatan 
that there will be people that will be left behind, that they are behind, and these are the people that will learn and educate the community. So what is this ayah saying? Beautiful ayah. This ayah is for the ulama, this ayah is for the du'at, these ayah are for the da'i, for the people who are doing Islamic work. Allah is saying, not everyone will become a doctor, not everyone will become an engineer, not everyone will go in jihad. There will be knowledgeable people, they will be behind, they will be there. They will educate their community when they come back. They will tell them that this is right, this is wrong. As mentioned over here, that don't think that the people who are just behind, that these people are behind, they've got a reason. Why? Because Allah wants them to stay behind and Allah wants them to educate the community. And subhanAllah, I always say this, this is for someone like myself and the people who are doing Islamic work, that Allah wants us to be behind. We can't leave this country. You know, brothers always come to me and they say, you know, Islam is really going down and what should we do in these times? I say, you know what, Allah send us over here, there's a reason. So we need to stay here, we need to do that job, we need to educate the community, we need to be behind, we need to be educating the community, the younger generation that's coming, we need to actually tell them what they need to be doing in their lives. Now finally, Amazing ayahs that our Imam read today and uh, this is only for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It says لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ وَعَنِتُمْ حَرِيثٌ عَلَيْكُمْ SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to me and you that your Prophet is a special man حَرِيثٌ عَزِيزٌ عَنِتُمْ That he has pain for you He worries about you that you guys are not in the right track, he worries about you. And harisun Ali, that he is haris, he's soft towards you. When he speaks to you, he's nice. He, he comes with the softness towards you. And he gets anxious that my believers are not going to be forgiven. You know, every Nabi had a dua. They all use their dua. Our Nabi did not use his dua. He said to Allah, I need this on the day of judgment so that I can take my, my followers to Jannah. SubhanAllah, can you believe how much he loves us? You know, there was a, there's an incident, uh, 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 Rasulullah cried the whole night, Ummati, 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 Ummati. The whole night he cried, when he came to the ayah of Jahannam. And Aisha said, we, I went to him after he finished, he said, I worry about my nation. Oh Allah, forgive my nation. Oh Allah, forgive my nation. He's making dua for you. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Haraisun alaykum bil mu'mineen rahufur rahim. And he is the one who is soft towards you. And then Allah says, what did Allah start the surah? Bara'um. Allah said, I make you free, Muhammad. And also Allah is free from all these disbelievers. Then Allah gave you this all chunk of things that you need to do to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what does Allah end with? Now listen to this. Amazing. Quran is amazing. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْأَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ So Muhammad, if they turn away from you now, after all these warnings, then حَسْبِيَ Allah. Then leave them to me. Then I am the one that I will be judging all of these people. Then now you've done your job now. So now it's a message for all of us. If you want to turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Rasulullah has done the job now. And if we turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is severe punishment. So inshallah that brings an end. And I apologize, I did go a, a quite a lot in there. But see, understand, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet that Hasbi Allahu la ilaha illahu That I am enough for you Muhammad, that's it You've done your job, you've uh, told them what you needed to do Wa tawakkal ala Allah wa alayhi tawakkaltu Now you have your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And that's for us as well When you go, you invite someone to come to good And if they're not coming, you leave them to Allah now You've done your job and then you now have tawakkal in Allah, that Allah is the one who guides. So inshallah with that, we bring an end. But also, if there's any questions, I'll take questions. I apologize, I said to you, half an hour. But that, I forgot to tell you, that was a Pakistani half an hour. Um, you know, subhanAllah, I tell you this and I want to uh, leave on a lighter note. And uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, we, uh, when we go from overseas, us masakeen, when we go to Pakistan, the last time I went there was 2006. That was the wedding of my elder brother. And uh, when we go, you know, we have the, the time, the British time, the Western time. 
So it was a wedding and uh, we set up everything and we said we're going to get there on time. And so my uh, uh, auntie, my mum's uh, 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 sister, she said, don't go at 8 p.m. Are you guys mad that you go at 8 p.m.? But we said, that's Walima, we have to be there early. He said, no one, she said, no one's going to come before 11. And subhanAllah, we should have listened to her. We were there early and no one came. Even she did not come before 11. And so, subhanAllah, these are the weddings of Pakistan. They are musiba. You know, the Pakistani word musibat. That's exactly what they are. And they go till 2 a.m. in the night. So understand, if you invite someone, you have to be ready. So, and, and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy, inshallah. And we also ask for our country. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a sort of independence to Bangladesh. And may Allah give them a good leader now. And also I ask, you know, Allah gives a good leader to, the, to uh, the, the, our Indian Muslims as well. And SubhanAllah, they're struggling. They, uh, they've got Modi 1.0, uh, Modi 1.1, now they've got Modi 1.2. And we make dua for them that they don't get Modi 1.3. Inshallah, they, they are, the things are changing. May Allah make it easy for them because this guy is a tyrant, he's a Islamophobe, and he's done more damage to Islam than anyone else. Every uh, problem you see in the subcontinent, in Afghanistan, in Bangladesh, in Nepal, in Sri Lanka, this man is half responsible for all these problems. Because they always want all these sides to be on their side, and then you've got one miskeen in, the, in, in this side, Pakistan, that they don't even recognize, and all the problem comes uh, to Pakistan. And mashallah, we make dua, you know, for Pakistan as well, that Allah actually uh, gives them a good leader. And if that leader, if you guys believe it's Imran Khan, if it's Imran Khan, may Allah give Imran Khan to Pakistan and he comes as a leader uh, for the change. And we make dua for our Afghan, Afghan brothers as well, that they're doing really good. We should learn from them. Their uh, pesa or whatever their currency is, it's only less than $50. 50 of theirs for one dollar. We can learn from them. SubhanAllah, they've come a long way. Fighting wars for 60 years. 60 years of their life. The ones who are that, of that age, if you ask them, they just, uh, what, what they did, you ask them, oh, we played with the bombs of Russians. And later on we played, our children played with the bombs of Americans. And now we've got some sort of freedom. And we, are, we make dua for them. And also we've got... Um, uh, you know, uh, people from uh, our brothers who are Muslims in Africa as well, uh, in West Africa, we make dua for them as well, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for them. And everyone, we make dua for everyone, and Palestinians particularly at this time, that they're suffering, may Allah bring an ease to them and take this tyrant away. And inshallah, uh, remember, our lesson is about, um, uh, you know, uh, masculinity, and femininity and we are going to speak about this because I believe that our girls, our young girls don't know what their responsibilities are and our young boys also don't know what their responsibilities are. Inshallah we want to speak about this. And I want to finish off on one uh, point. I'll tell you this. A woman is born feminine. She is born weak not to take anything away from the sisters because they're sitting over there. They're weak, they don't want responsibility. They're emotional. They want men to be men and to look after them. They want men to take responsibility. But because our men have become like, you know, uh, you're sitting on the couch and their, their wives are paying for the credit card bill, bills as well. They're doing all these things. And so they feel that they're being overburdened. So when they say something back to the husband and the husband gets upset, why? Because you lost that right. You actually were to look after your wife. You were to make your wife feel. Because women love being weak. That's their nature. They love being that. But when you take that nature away from them, and your men are by nature, you know, the one who have to take responsibility. You know, they're the ones who are out there. Who, they're the ones who face the difficulty. A man should be brave. He should not be like, you know, he's hiding. Or if the fight starts, where do you find the husband behind the wife? 
You should not be like that. You should never be like that. No, subhanAllah, you should be always in front of the wife. You know, when the fight starts, you're finding, you know, you're telling your wife, oh, please, Samalina, please. So you can't be like that, you know. You have to be, inshallah. We leave it there. And inshallah, jazakallah khairan for everyone. And inshallah, next lecture will be half an hour, inshallah.